Hi there and welcome to another AP Chemistry video. I'm Jeremy Krug and in this video we're going to be looking at more reactions. So we've been learning about how to write equations for all kinds of reactions over the last several videos. Redox and precipitation and balancing redox. Here we're going to finish up our discussion of that by writing some uh, synthesis reactions, some decomposition reactions, and hopefully these are some reactions that will find very that you'll find very useful as you go through AP chemistry and general chemistry and, and other chemistry courses that you might be taking now or be taking in the future. Before I start though, uh, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, uh, I'd like to encourage you to do so because this is the entire AP chemistry course that I'm putting online. And if you find this video useful, if you'll be so kind as to give me a thumbs up, that way YouTube will share this video with uh, other chemistry students as well, folks who uh, would like to do well in their courses. All right, let's start with other synthesis reactions here. So uh, a metallic oxide combines with water to produce a metallic hydroxide. So what does that mean? Well, a metallic oxide is just a compound that's a metal combined with oxygen. So sodium oxide or um, zinc oxide. These are examples of metallic oxides. And so if we have this example here, solid potassium oxide is added to water. Well, you just write the, the formula there. Potassium oxide, of course, is uh, K2O, and we're adding it to water. And what's the product? Well, a metallic hydroxide. So it's going to be KOH, right? Now, since it's in solution, there's water present, we need to write it in its ion form. You know, so it's K plus and OH minus, okay? And for uh, those group one and two hydroxides, they are going to break apart because those are strong bases. And of course, you want to make sure this is balanced and looks like this one is not. So I'm going to balance it just like that. And looks like need another one there. So now the equation is balanced. So that's that's one type of reaction. Metallic oxides combine with water to make metallic hydroxides. Let's try another example of that. Let's try strontium oxide is added to water. So once again, we have strontium oxide is SRO and it's added to water. And so what's the product going to be? Well, the metallic hydroxide, the strontium hydroxide. And we're going to write that in its ion form. You know, we have a strontium and then we have the hydroxide there. And let's make sure this is balanced. Uh, I think the easiest way to balance that is put a two in front of the hydroxide and now it's balanced. So that's one of the rules. You need to know that uh, the AP curriculum does expect you to know, uh, to know that. Now here's another one. If metallic oxides combine with water, I guess non-metallic oxides can, can combine with water as well. And when that happens, they produce acids. Okay, so metallic oxides combine with water to make bases. Non-metallic oxides combine with water to make acids. So some of these are pretty easy to predict. You know, sulfur trioxide gas is bubbled into water. So hopefully you know sulfur trioxide is SO3. And with water, well, you can kind of just add up the numbers here and get H2SO4 and realize that that's what you're going to have. Of course, that's a strong acid, so you want to write it in its ionized form. You know, H plus and then the HSO4 uh, negative. Okay, I think that's balanced as it stands. So that's uh, a simple way of writing some of these. Or well, here's another one. Solid diphosphorus pentoxide reacts violently with water. So, you know, it's a violent reaction in this case. So we know what diphosphorus pentoxide is. That's P2O5, as we learned a long time ago. And of course, there's water. And sometimes you just have to know what the acid is. You know, can you think of an, a common acid that, that has P and O in it? Well, that sounds like phosphoric acid. So that's a pretty good guess. As it turns out, that's the right answer. It is H3PO4. Notice that's a weak acid. So I don't write it in its ionized form. I write it together. Okay. So notice the, uh, the difference here. Sulfuric acid is a strong acid. So I had to write it ionized. Whereas this weak acid, phosphoric acid, uh, it's weak. And so I don't uh, split it up into ions. Okay. And this is not balanced, is it? So we do have to balance it. The College Board expects us to, to balance this. And so if we uh, look at the 
Let's balance the oxygens last. We look at the uh, phosphoruses. Uh, here we balance the phosphoruses with a two there. And now the hydrogens, we've got six hydrogens, so we'll put a three there. I think that takes care of our oxygens as well. We've got eight and eight, so that's good. So sometimes you just have to know which acid is formed, phosphoric in this case. And if you know your acids, that's, that makes that job a little bit easier. So let's take a look at some decomposition reactions. We did synthesis. Let's look at decomposition. So a metallic carbonate, when heated vigorously, decomposes into a metallic oxide and carbon dioxide gas. So we'll try an example of solid cal uh, calcium carbonate is heated over a flame in a crucible. So you want to write the formula for calcium carbonate. That's CaCO3. That's a solid, of course. And what are we going to make? Well, we're going to make a metallic oxide. The metal, of course, is the calcium. So it's calcium oxide. So that's CaO. And then there's our carbon dioxide. Notice that there's really no water here, so there's no opportunity for for anything to be ionized or anything, and, and calcium oxide is uh, is a solid in this case. Okay, double check to make sure that your equation is balanced, and it does look like it is. So that's that's good. Let's try another one. Let's try solid lithium carbonate heated vigorously this time. So once again, you got to be able to write the formulas for these lithium carbonate. You know, carbonate's a minus two, lithium's a plus one, so it's Li2CO3. And what's it going to decompose into? Well, once again, a metallic oxide. So the metal is lithium this time. So it's lithium oxide. That's Li2O. And of course, our carbon dioxide. Double check to make sure everything is balanced and looks like it is. So this is our, uh, that's our balanced equation. So that's the first type of decomposition reaction. And it doesn't look like there's redox or anything here. This is just a simple decomposition process. So here's another type of decomposition. A metallic chlorate, when heated vigorously, will decompose, there shouldn't be a D there, will decompose into a metallic chloride and O2 gas. So let's try this example. Solid sodium chlorate in a test tube is heated vigorously. So we need to know what sodium chloride, uh, chlorate is. You know, that's chlorate is a ClO3 with a negative one charge. Sodium is an Na plus, so that's going to be like this. And when you heat it vigorously, we're going to make a metallic chloride. So what's the metal going to be? Well, the metal is the sodium. So we're going to make sodium chloride, and we know what that is, NaCl. And of course, our O2 is there. Okay, notice uh, there's no water here. It's just a solid that we started out with. So there's no reason to think that the sodium chloride is going to ionize. It's just still going to be in its solid state. To be honest, uh, it may actually start out as a liquid because you're going to get this very, very hot. But then when, once the reaction is all, done, is all finished, it is going to go back to being a solid again. So is this equation balanced? I don't think it is. Our oxygen certainly are not balanced. So I need a 2 over here and a 3 over here to balance those oxygens. Now I can balance my sodiums and chlorines like this, and now it's a balanced equation. How about this? Solid calcium chlorate is heated vigorously. So once again, it's the same type of process. We have to be able to write calcium chlorate. Don't forget the subscript and parentheses on that one because the charges don't cancel out. And once again, we're going to get a metallic chloride. So the metal this time is, is calcium. So it's calcium chloride that, that we're going to get, CaCl2, and oxygen. This is not balanced, is it? We have, looks like we have six oxygens on the left side, you know, three times two. So if we balance the oxygens here, uh, now I think we have a balanced equation. So that's metallic chlorates heated. You need to know that. Here's another case. Acids can decompose into non-metallic oxides and water, of course, while bases can decompose into metallic oxides and water when heated. Uh, I didn't put water on there because I thought that went without saying, but we might need to clarify that. So let's say we have carbonic acid that decomposes 
at normal atmospheric pressures. This is something we talked about in an earlier lesson. I think it was lesson 10 about solutions, or perhaps this was lesson uh, 11 with uh, gas evolution reactions. Carbonic acid is H2CO3. You know, carbonic implies carbonate. So, you know, H2CO3. And so we're going to get water. And what's the non-metallic oxide going to be? Well, you can probably figure it out. It's going to be CO2. Okay, so that's our our gas that's produced from that one. So acids produce water and a non-metallic oxide. On the other hand, here's a base. Solid sodium hydroxide is heated in a test tube. Well, we all know what sodium hydroxide is, NaOH. And when we heat it up, we're going to make water. And then what's the other product going to be? Well, this time it's a metallic oxide. And the metal is going to be sodium. So it's sodium oxide. Na2O and H2O. This one's not a balanced equation this time, is it? We have to put a 2 in front of Na to balance our sodiums, and I think that balances the oxygens and the hydrogens as well. So once again, I've kind of given you a mishmash of all kinds of reactions. We focused on synthesis and decomposition in this video. Uh, we haven't done any redox. That was in the previous videos. If you want to see those, then head on back to, to those. I do hope you learned something from this video. My goal is for you to get a five or whatever high score you want on your AP chemistry exam or in your general chemistry class, if that's what you're taking. Uh, I'm Jeremy Krug. I've been teaching high school chemistry and AP chemistry for over 20 years. If you learned something from my video, if you'll please be, be so kind as to hit that thumbs up button so that YouTube will share my video with other chemistry students as well. B based on their algorithm, if nobody hits the thumbs up button, uh, my videos will sink into oblivion and no one will ever know how to write these equations. Well, uh, of course they will, but I I'd kind of like for them to use my videos for that purpose. So once again, thanks for joining me. I uh, hope to see you again on my channel where we can learn some more, learn some more chemistry together.